In this video, we're going to be using Fluent Forms, and we're going to pre-populate one of the text input fields in our form with the post title or page title, however you can insert or pre-populate with any data. And then we're also going to make sure that other text fields function as normal, and then we'll also be making sure that no other forms on the website are affected by that function. So the setup for the demo is going to be the standard install of Fluent Forms, so the free version. Then we have code snippets for the function, and then we are going to be using Oxygen Builder for the website theme. Right, to get started then, these plugins have been installed, and to show you how this fits together, the first thing I'm going to do then is head over to Fluent Forms, and I'm going to create a new form. So I'll create a new form, and what I'm going to do now straight away is create a simple text field. Now I can do it from here or I can hit the plus button and add a text field. And what I'm going to do is call that a test field. And what's important for the function to work is to make sure that each text field has a unique name. And to set the name of the uh, input text field, we head over to advanced options and here you'll see name attribute and the name attribute that I'm going to use then is test underscore field and it's important just to make sure that each of these fields has a unique value otherwise whatever data you'd like to pre-fill with will be applied to all the text fields with the same name. Then I'm going to just go and have a look at the subject field um, and I'm there going to have a look and see what that unique name is. So this is subject, so I'm just going to add subject field. And we're going to save the form. So I've changed the values there, then I'm going to copy that to my clipboard. And now what I'm going to do is head over to Oxygen and let's insert that into Oxygen. Right, so here we have Oxygen, which has been preloaded, and this is the, po the, the uh, short code of the existing form, but we'll be creating a new one. So I'm now going to paste my new form in that space. I'm going to save, and now when I head over to the front end of the website and I refresh, you'll see that the form is now replaced by another form, and all the fields are available to be used as normal. Right, so now that we've created the form and we've inserted, the next thing that we need to have a look at then is to look at the function that we're going to use to create that pre-filled value. So here we head over to our snippets and we're going to create a new snippet. So this snippet here that we used for the previous form, I'm going to delete. And then I'm going to create a new form snippet. So add new. And let's just call that form function. And we'll just save changes and activate. Now we'll start with the basic function and then we'll build out from there. So here's a basic filter that would allow us to update the values on a form. And if we have a look at that, you'll see that what we have is that we have this fluent form function which has been created specifically for uh, the input text field. And you'll see that the function then pulls in the data and form values in the form of an array. What happens now inside the filter is that the, uh, the values are created. These are the new values that we're going to be using to input into our form. So they're created in this custom variable. And here we have the data attributes variable that we're building and then we're going to return that data and the data inside this the the array inside this data will then be applied to the form now as you can see the custom we have a value which is equal to hello and read only is set to true so that means that the form can't be edited so there we will pre-populate and it won't be editable. And here we just build up that 
um, that value. So now I'm going to save. So now when I reload the page, that filter is going to be applied to this form. And you'll see that the, uh, the um, input fields now both reflect hello. Now the problem is, is that all the forms on the website that have a, a text input field are now going to reflect that value, not just this form. So what we need to do is first of all, identify this particular form and make sure that only this form is going to be affected by the function. So to do that, I'm going to head over to oxygen and I see here that the fluent form ID on this page is equal to five. And then I'm going to go back to my snippet and now I'm going to create a function. Right. So to do the function, it will be if we'll have something to evaluate and then that will be the end of the function. Then what I'm going to say, well, um, if something else return these values. So what I need to do now is make sure that the form ID is equal to a specific value. Um, and that way, if it equals that value, then I know that it's safe to apply the the, the function. So the first thing that we're going to do is check the form ID. So if form, so we say if the form ID is not equal to five. So if it's not equal to five, then we'll say return and we're going to say return data. And that will ensure then that whatever data is already in the form is returned to the form. So there will be no pre-populated fields and it'll just be the default values for those forms as they are created in Fluent Forms. However, if the form ID is not equal to, if the form value is equal to five, then this, this these values will be updated. Right, so let's test that. So I'm going to save the changes. I'm going to head over to the form. I'm going to refresh. And we know that the value of this form is indeed five. So the function is applied. And now what I'm going to do is change that value to a four. So now it's not meant for this particular form. And if I refresh, you'll see now that the default values as created in Fluent Forms applies. So we head back to our snippet and I'm going to make sure now that that is on five. The next thing that we need to do is identify the individual fields. Now we know that one is called subject and the other one is called is subject field and a test field. So let's see how we go about identifying those and applying the values. So here we have an if function now that will be executed. So an if statement. So if, and in this case, we know that it must be subject underscore field. So what we're doing is we're saying, and let's just close that if statement. So what we're saying is that if using this array helper, we look for attributes and the attribute name is subject field. Now we know that in fluent forms under subject and we go and look at the advanced object and we see that it's subject field. We head back to our snippet and we make sure that subject field is correct. And here I'm saying if the attribute name is equal to subject field, then apply these values. So let's save that. Just make sure we have all our braces in the right place. Right, let's save those changes. And now I'm going to refresh the page and you'll immediately see that this particular field has been pre-populated with the word hello, but now the second text field is not displaying correctly. The title for the field is missing 
and there could be other data also missing. So there is an issue there. So we head back to our snippet and we have a look and we see, okay, so the subject field is populated correctly because we have the custom value set to low and we've said it should be read only. So that is correct. So the subject field is working correctly, but the test field isn't. So now what we're going to do is we're going to say return data. So we're saying if the subject, um, if the name of that field is equal to subject field, then return that value. Otherwise, just return the standard data, the default data for those fields. And now when I refresh, you'll see that the second test field is working as normal and all other text fields on that form will work as normal. So if we head over to our editor and we're going to add another text field and I'm just going to go with the standard settings. I'm not going to change anything there and I head over, you'll see that that works as normal. If I wanted to move that around, it's quite easy. Then I would just change that subject field to test, save the changes. And now you'll see that that moves down to the test field. So that's how easy it is then to apply and then to decide which field to use um, with the pre-populated values. As I'm just going to delete that second field. So that's great. Now we have our form. Let's have a look at a practical example of how we could deploy this form on our website. So in this case, I'm going to head over to my shop. And here we are on the shop page. And then I'm going to head over to a product. And I'm here on the product page and I suddenly think, well, you know what? I wouldn't mind having a feedback form on this page that users could use if they wanted to contact me, but then I would like to pre-populate the name of the product on, on that form so they can see uh, which form they're inquiring about. So this would just be a quick inquiry form. To have a look and see how we can do that, I'm gonna head over to um, Oxygen. And then what we're going to do is go to product single and let's do that with um, edit with Oxygen. And then we're going to just uh, install that form on the page so users who have an inquiry can do a, an inquiry straight from the product. Oxygen loaded and here I am on my product page. So to, ins to insert that particular form on the page, I'm just going to expand the structure section here. And what I'm going to do is add a new section and move that to the top and inside that section I'm going to add a short code and I'm going to go and get the short code for the form so click to copy head back over to oxygen paste in the short code for the form and then I'm going to save right so as you can see the pre-filled form says hello and the contact field also shows hello. So let's pull in that post title. To do that, what we're going to do is insert some code and that code will look like this. So let's get the title. So, um, right, so we say, the post title is equal to get the title and we copy that variable and in the value now for the form we take out hello and we insert the post title and save the changes. Now when we head back to our contact form you'll see that we've pulled in the name contact and if I head over to the shop and I go and have a look at a specific product. We've put in the form and it's pulled through the product name onto the form. 
I'd prefer to have that displaying on the subject field. So I head back to my snippet and I just change the name of the field to subject field, save the changes, refresh, and now my subject is the name of the product. I'm not happy with that form being displayed permanently. So one way that I can just uh, make remove that is to go to the helpers and to look for, um, let's see, let's go with toggle. And in the toggle then I'm going to move my short code into the toggle. So I'm going to remove that text. And what I'm going to do is go to the toggle and I'm going to say it must be open closed. And ask a question. And let's change the size of that font. So let's go down to an H3. Let's just change some size and spacing. Let's just drop that right down. And then what I'm going to do is in the toggle itself is um, maybe just set the width. And then I'm just going to set a background color. All right, so just something really quick and easy. And let's make that a very light red. And in size and spacing, then let's go with 10. So there we have our toggle. And to give it the impression of a button, I'm just going to give it a border radius of 5. So it looks a little bit like a button. Hit save. And then head over to the website. And now at the top of each page, I have ask a question. The user can then fill in the form and everybody is happy. Let's just refresh that. We want that to open closed. So here I am and I'm saying on the toggle, it must toggle initial state must be closed. Save. And for some reason, that isn't working in that way. Let's just check it on another product. Beanie with logo, it keeps toggling to open when it opens. And I'm going to head back here and it's definitely set to closed. Ah, now it's working. So here we are on the product page and you'll see that our toggle at the top of the page, ask a question. I can then quite quickly fill in my details, ask my question. So uh, this is required. And once submitted, if I go and have a look at the entries, you'll see that the form has been submitted. And you'll also notice there that the subject is Beanie with logo. So the correct subject is being pulled through, which is the name of the page. So that's how easy it would be then to create a feedback form uh, with your product just by using the simple toggle and the um, and pre-filling the form with the title of the page. So I hope you found that video useful and thank you for watching.